G'day, welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I just want to bring to you a little update video on, on from a video last week, or an update from a video last week, on our little 22 Magnum Rimfire project. Now this is the rifle I'm using, for those people who aren't aware of what that is, this is a Ruger Precision um, 22 Magnum rifle, which this is back in its more of its normal format, how you'd normally expect to see them. Uh, I've set it, had it set up, or I vary how this rifle is set up, but for the, for the ELR project that I'm up to, um, it's a little bit different scope on it, different back here to make it all shoot as well as it can. And what I've actually been up to it is designing or building a little custom bullet. This is what that little custom bullet looks like. It's basically taking 22 factory ammunition, I pull a bullet out, put a different bullet in um, with a better BC for extreme long range shooting for a rimfire. That's what the project is, trying different bits and pieces, trying to get it more accurate, but largely trying to get a good bullet flying well in it. Now in that process, I found a peculiar thing. I've run, tried different ammo, used different things, but I was using this 22, um, or this 30 grain Hornady, uh, what is it? It's the Varmint Express, so it's a 30 grain ammo that runs decent steady, little ballistic tip. Well, I was using that as the base ammo, pulling it out, putting the bigger bullet in. Um, and in all my setup and testing I do, I found I had to do a special crimp on there to make it work as well as it could. And the curious thing I ran into, I was speed testing the, the ammunition and I found that my 40 grain ammo loaded into this 30 grain um, cases with the same powder, no change, that sort of stuff, was actually running faster than what the, when the, what the factory 30 grains were. My presumption there was that it was actually the crimp that was causing it, um, but that's all I tested. I found it was it was had a better extreme spread, it had a more speed, had everything going on that was way better with my factory crimp. Um, well, sorry, with the crimp I'd put on it. So the obvious thing was, okay, if you took the factory ammo, just the 30 grain, and just crimped it, which is what I did here. Um, I'll show some close-ups of that, but this is the stuff that I actually crimped, and otherwise there was stuff just straight out of the box, and I shot it. Um, and yeah, I saw those changes. I saw some other things that were a bit more interesting and I'll get into a little bit, but we'll go through and show you what I saw. So I'll turn this thing on. Okay, so what I saw here, that's actually what we saw in the way of the um, factory ammo. This is the, the Series 15, went through the factory ammo. And as you can see there, we've got uh, an average speed of 1943. So slower than they talk about. I think they're expecting that over 2000. But um, anyway, what it was, was the 1943. Its highest was um, 2044. Um, and lowest was 1850. So yeah, extreme spread of 193 standard deviation of 85 it was terrible it's all over the place low high and random all the way through it really you just didn't know what the next shot was going to be speed wise it's not too bad on accuracy but um and i would say last week when i shot this it was um i ended up shooting this this is a little barrel stabilizer that i've made it's a little bit of chrome molly tube um, with a bit of a muzzle brake in the end of it which is just how i've made it so it screws on one end of the rifle and it has a bit of insulation tape to to basically is to try and help with harmonic st stability the other detail is there's a there's a muzzle brake here and it actually must be raising the pressure a little bit because i actually saw some more speed i saw um, uh, close to another 50, maybe 70 feet per second out of this thing on there. So that's why the speed's a little bit different, um, which I wasn't aware of. It's another thing I got to test. But anyway, that, that means that we could have a longer barrel and get more speed out of the 22 um, Magnum ammunition. But that's a, that's a segue. Let's come back to this. So that's the standard stuff. And you can see it's not awesome. It's not great. If we go up to the series that we did, so this is the series 16, you can see that we, um, yeah, it all improved, everything. From the speed went from, that's up 200 feet per second by just simply putting that crimp on there. Um, highest and lowest, you can see, it's, it's, it, there's a reasonable spread in this sort of stuff. We've got an extreme spread of 80. We've got a standard deviation of 35. So it's a lot, lot better than what it was. You know, it's, it's, it's faster, it's better in every format. But it's even better than this, actually. If you go into the detail here, yeah, so from shot, five 
See, there's 2180, shot 6, 2181, shot 7, 2182, shot 8, 2179, shot 9, 2185. You can see that that really, that's what I did. I ran, I ran a magazine of about nine through them. Um, it really shot really, really well. So I think that, that lot there, which had an extreme spread of six and a standard deviation of three or two or whatever it is out of that little, what is that? That's a four shot string five shot string um, was incredibly good I wouldn't expect it to get that good but the crimp which is a little segmented crimp so it's not just a roll crimp it's actually coming in on the segmented thing which is custom made but so I've gone through and I, I took a um, it was a 22 Hornet um, crimp tool and modified it to make it work with this the type of thing that any any you know sort of reloader with a with access to a bit of machining gear would be able to set up uh, but really made a huge difference so maybe there's a little bit more I could do in the way of getting more of that stuff accurate but um, and getting it even nicer it's certainly like I said those speeds I was seeing another 50 feet per second I think out of running this little extension on the front of it so it would suggest that a different barrel with another couple of inches would work with it but it does definitely come down to the crimp being the key feature um, and a really really important thing certainly in this rifle um, certainly with this ammo so I would I would be suspecting crimp is something you can look at recrimping oh, listen it could be a real advantage for people who are trying to make factory ammo work better there could be something to actually doing that um, and yes you could do lots lots more testing not something I'm going to go down unless unless someone wants to sponsor us to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars playing those games because different rifles and the rifling the way that works is going to affect things a little bit because they are using the crimp in this rifle at least the crimp is what's creating the pressure not the lands not as it pressures through the lands um, and then there's all the different ammos and how much what they're like all that sort of stuff all the different crimps and those sort of bits and pieces I would suspect from my experience and from what I've seen of the bit of ammo I've played with probably a dozen different types um, None of them have really strong crimps on them, so I suspect that you'll be able to see advantage with all the crimps. Um, and as for 22 Magnums, yeah, I've only got a couple, um, and there's obviously hundreds if not thousands of different 22 Magnums out there. So how their rifling works is going to affect them. But certainly what I've seen, this is one of the key ingredients as to why 22 Magnums normally, and I know every time I say that normally they are not very accurate. There's always someone who's got a brilliant ragged hole at 200 yards, 22 Magnum. But this and what I'm seeing means that it would have to be something special or different going on in the rifling for it to use this ammo in a super accurate form. When we're talking about something that has such random speed differences in what I, I would consider fairly average, not an awesome build, but still the rifling is going to be the setup in the, in the chamber is going to be very, very average. So anyway, listen, that's what I can tell you for the people who asked. Yes, there is a big difference in taking factory ammo and recrimping it. Um, uh, I'll put some image on, you can see what there is. No, it's not stuff I'm planning on building and selling. Just did want to do that test because, yeah, it was a question mark. I'm going to carry on building my custom ammo um, and go through those next steps. I've built something that I think is going pretty well, little bike tail bullet. Um, I think that's going to turn into something pretty decent when I've got some dry paddocks to shoot out to. I'm looking forward to stretching this out to 600, 800, probably 1,000 and see what sort of consistency we can get with a decent sort of speed, a decent sort of bullet um, in an average little rifle with some tweaks. Anyway, and by the way, the format it's in right now is how it's sort of normally played with, just a little red dot on top of it. So it's just a, you know, or a little clear view, whatever they're called. But it's sort of just fun to go out and shoot this sort of stuff, a little bit of, a little bit of play, sort of set up a good little hunter like this. But um, that's its normal format. What you're seeing on the other channel is with a bit of work down the back to stabilise it, a big scope on it so we can actually see properly to, like I said, do a little bit of ELR. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking in on us. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you next time.